Hey guys, I'm finally getting around to making this CNC plasma cutter build. Sorry it took so long. Um, this is the first video of probably five or six videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the frame. In this series, I want to show you a complete building process, including the wiring and software setup. So complete beginning to end build series. In the description, I have a SOLIDWORKS model with all the parts and assembly, as well as a PDF drawing for those of you who don't have SOLIDWORKS. If you don't have SOLIDWORKS, I've created a part that is the whole assembly in one SOLIDWORKS part. With this file, you should be able to open the file in Fusion 360, which is a free CAD program. It just won't have all the individual moving parts. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below, but let's get to the build. I started off by cutting the 4x2x3 by by inch tubing. I then cut out the 2x2x1/8 by by inch tubing. And then I cut the 4x4x1/8 four by four by inch. I did do 4x4 four four on this build instead of the 4x6 that you can see in my previous video. After everything was cut out, I power washed it to get the grease off for welding, as well as grinded the burrs off. It was now time to start welding. I'm using an ESOB EMP 215 IC on 240 volt power and I'm using MIG with C25 gas. I found that the settings 250 for the wire feed speed and 18 volts work pretty well for this range of thickness. I started off by building the frame that the linear bearings bolt to, trying to keep it as square as possible. I was going for a 16th inch tolerance on most of the project, but here I was trying to shoot for around a 32nd inch tolerance. My table wasn't big enough to assemble it completely, so I had to use the floor, which wasn't ideal. I tried to find the most flat spot, but it wasn't perfect. Again, I'm just trying to keep everything as square as I can, as well as keeping the top and sides flush. After checking to make sure it was cross squared and that it was the same distance from side to side, I added more tacks to make the frame stronger. After the top frame was done, I started working on the legs and table. Again, I started on the work table, but in the end had to move down to the floor. You can see here I had the leg set the right way, but for some reason decided to flip it. You can see I then had to redo it after I realized what I had done. I then added the cross beam to the side assemblies as well as the legs used to mount the casters. I forgot to film the casters, but you'll see what I mean later. I found that standing the sides up like this works pretty well. I could then use other tubing to act as a support so I could add the cross beams and square the table up. The problem with this method is that the floor is not level, so I had to be careful not to make the frame fit to the uneven floor. It's hard to see in this video, but these cross beams are actually offset 1 8 of an inch up to lock the gantry frame in place. I then added the gantry frame to make sure everything fit properly. You can see me grinding the tacks because the gantry frame wasn't sitting properly so I fixed that. I then added the bottom cross beams to the table using the same method of using square tubing as a support piece.
I then checked squareness and found that it was pretty bad, so I ended up using a ratchet chain to bring the two corners in, which actually worked pretty well. I then tacked everything in place. Next I started working on the middle cross pieces. Again these are offset up an eighth of an inch to just lock the gantry frame in place. I designed the table where you can lift the gantry frame along with everything else to move it or store it. Then it's only the bottom part, the table frame left, though I don't really use this feature. After tacking everything I added the middle crossbars. I then welded everything up, trying not to add too much heat to any one area. And then grinded the welds that need to be flush. It was now time to CNC plasma cut all the miscellaneous parts for the gantry and motor mounts. This is my current and first CNC plasma machine build. As you can see, the one I'm building currently will be a huge upgrade, though my first build worked great and got the job done. I'm using a Hobart Air Force 700i plasma cutter for my power supply, which has worked fine for what I use it for. For many of you who watched my first video, you'll notice that I'm not using the hypertherm and the CNC machine I videoed. That machine I actually built for a friend, so the hypertherm was his as well as the machine. I was just videoing it to show the THC because Price CNC said they would give a discount if you uploaded a video, which I have never received by the way. After cutting all the parts out, I had to take the dross off. A little trick that I like to use is if you have a strong magnet, you can place that on the table and then use it to keep the pieces you are grinding from moving. Works pretty well and can avoid the annoyance of changing pieces with clamps. After grinding the dross, I grinded the edges to make them less sharp. I then printed a one-to-one -one scale of the drawing as a template and cut it out. I then used it to find where to drill the needed holes and where to weld the bolt bracket. I did this for both sides. You can see the template has the holes for the bearing as well as the pivot bolt hole and the bracket placement for the tensioner system. The bottom two holes are just places to attach cable ties. After using templates on all the pieces that needed holes, I drilled the holes out using my drill press. I then tacked the tensioner brackets on. Here I'm adding the tensioner bolt mounts. After tacking all of them on, I made sure everything fit and worked properly. You can see how the system works here. I also made sure the other side worked too. I then welded the brackets on. I had some good welds and some not so good ones. I lost the footage of me installing the linear rails, but I just clamped them to the side and made sure they were centered and the correct distance from the top. I then drilled and tapped the holes. I only used five bolts, which I think is fine. I now took the sides of the gantry and bolted them to the linear bearings on the rail. I tried to make it as perpendicular to the top of the table as I could. I moved the assembly to the end so I knew they would be in the same place so the gantry would be as straight as possible. I then measured the distance between the two sides. I cut the gantry crossbeam to size.
Then I clamped some spare pieces to act as a support so I could make sure everything was good before I welded the sides on. It was nice to be able to make small adjustments and try and get the cross beam exactly where I wanted it. I then checked to make sure the gantry was parallel with the top of the table, as well as the side was perpendicular to the top of the table. After everything looked good, I tacked it up. You can see I used some wet rags to protect the linear bearings and rail from any spatter and sparks. After it was all tacked and still looked good, I welded it. After welding it all, I grounded the welds down to make it look nicer. Definitely not because the welds didn't turn out the best. This is where I added the plates with nuts on the bottom to make it so I can make the table level on uneven ground. The plasma cut holes weren't perfect so I had to use a drill pit to extend and make sure the bolt would fit. I tightened the bolt and nut and then centered the bolt in the hole and then welded the nut to the plate. I then tacked and welded those plates to the legs. You can see what I did for the casters. I had a plate with bolt holes and then welded that to the smaller legs of the table. And that completed the main frame.